Here we'll do some examples from the day 38 assignment. These deal with uh, square root functions. So on this problem, they want us to describe the transformations from, from the parent function f of x is equal to square root of x. This just involves identifying a, b, h, and k. Here I have an a of negative 6, which is going to lead to a vertical stretch and a x-axis reflection. Um, I have a b of 1 on the inside of the uh, square root. I have an h of negative 5, and I have a k of negative 4. So the b, is, the b means that there's not going to be a, a horizontal stretch or compress, and there's not going to be a y-axis reflection. The h means that I'm going to translate five units to the left, and the k means I'm going to translate four units down. So let's enter all this information in. We're going to stretch vertically by a factor, not of negative 6, but of 6, because the negative, what that does is it does an x-axis reflection. I'm going to translate to the, uh, in this case, uh, down, not by negative 4, but by 4 units. The negative means you're going to go down. The 4 means uh, is how far. And I'm going to go to the left, 5 units. Okay, here, uh, select the graph of the transform function, and then describe the domain and range. Okay, so I'm actually going to do this on a separate graph, and then I'll come back and pick the one that it looks like, so you can see the transformation is being applied. G of x is equal to square root of negative, negative 2 over 3. x minus 1 half minus 3. Let's make sure I wrote that correctly. And yeah, that's correct. So let's identify our transformation values. A is going to be 1, B is negative 2 thirds, H is positive 1 half, and K is negative 3. So A is not going to do anything but the other transformation numbers are. As far as picking transform points, um, one of them is going to be given to me for free. A square root I know has an end point and then goes forever in one direction. That end point where the graph stops is at h comma k. So I know that 1 half comma negative 3 is going to be part of the graph. <clears throat> That's the end point. But now I need to pick some parent points and transform them. The parent points are 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3, 16, 4, 25, 5, any, any point where the y is the square root of the x. What is probably getting your attention right now are these fractions at b and h. And b and h both affect the, uh, the x values. So I know that I'm supposed to divide by b, so that's really, and since the b is negative 2 over 3, that's going to cause me to multiply by negative 3 over 2, multiply by the reciprocal. And what I normally focus on is the denominator, and I would want to pick parent points that are divisible by 2, because that would knock out the denominator. But if I want to be really clever here, since right after that, I'm going to have to add 1 half, and I can't do anything about that. That 2 is going to be down there. And when I add fractions, I have to have a common denominator. I'm actually going to be smart about this, and I'm going to pick parent points that the denominator won't cancel out. So that way I'll be left with a common denominator. So I'm going to start with 1, 1. You can pick whichever points you want, as long as they're parent points for square root functions. Instead of 4, 2, I'm going to go to 9, 3. Uh, and I could do 16, 4 as well, but I think I'm going to have some problems with 16, 4, getting it to fit on the graph. So we'll start with these, and then... If we need an extra point afterwards, then we'll, we'll use it. Ideally, I like to graph four points, but three would, three would be okay. So we're going to get this 1, 1. The, the 1 for the x is going to get multiplied by the reciprocal, which is negative 3 over 2, and then add 1 half. The 1 for the y is uh, going to be times 1, but that doesn't do anything, so just minus the 3 from the k. So 1 times negative 3 over 2 is negative 3 over 2, plus 1 half is negative 2 over 2. 1 minus 3 is just negative 2. Negative 2 over 2 is going to be negative 1 and negative 2. So here we have another point. 9, 3. The 9 from the x is going to be times negative 3 over 2 plus 1 half. Then the, uh, the y is going to just be 
uh, subtract is you're going to add k, so you're going to subtract 3. So 9 times negative 3 over 2 is negative 27 over 2 plus 1 half, and 3 minus 3 is 0. Negative 27 plus 1 is negative 26 divided by 2 is negative 13, comma, 0. So when I plot these points, I know that 1 half negative 3 is going to be an endpoint. Then negative 1, negative 2 puts me here. looks like this underwent a, a y-axis reflection like it was supposed to. And then negative 13, comma, 0, I don't have enough space, but it would be somewhere out here. So if I were to graph this, this would look something like that. It's never going completely to the left. It's always going to be arcing up a little bit, but it's hard to hand draw. So it would be somewhere around there. I'm looking for a graph that looks like that. Uh, now it looks like my interval here is by one half. They're counting by one half. It's zero, one half, one, one and a half. So since I'm looking for an endpoint that's at one half comma negative three, I'd be looking for an endpoint that's one unit to the um, right, and then it'll be six boxes down, and it looked pretty flat. So it looks like the only one that that could be here is A. A has an endpoint that's at one half comma negative three, and if you were to compare the other points that I found, you would find them on A as well. But at the bottom here, they want us to also identify the domain and range. So let's see, domain means what are all the x's that are contained in my graph? How far left and how far right? Well, I go left forever, but I only go as far right as one half. They've already written the x for me, and they want us. It looks like they want this as a um, an inequality in set notation. So they've written the x for me, so I would just write less than or equal to one over two. Then for the range. I go as low as negative 3, but I go up forever. If I gave this enough space, it would go up forever. So they've written the y greater than or equal to negative 3. And that's correct. Okay, select the graph of the transform function. So we're going to graph again. g of x is equal to 3, square root of x plus 2 minus 2. Let's identify a, b, h, and k. a is 3, b is 1, h is negative 2, k is negative 2. So I'm given one point for free. That's the end point is going to be at negative 2, negative 2, but let's find the rest. Um, here I don't see any fractions, so I'm going to want to pick the points that are closest to the end point. So I can do that by using 1, 1, 4, 2, and I might be able to fit an extra one in here. I like as many points as possible, so I'm going to also use 9, 3. The uh, x's are going to be uh, multi uh, sorry divided by 1, but that does nothing. And then I'm going to add negative 2, so it's just going to be 1 minus 2. The y's are going to be times 3 minus 2, so 1 times 3 minus 2. That gives me 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 1 times 3 minus 2 gives me positive 1. Then 4 minus 2. 2 times 3 minus 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Minus 2 is 4. Then 9 minus 2. 3 times 3 minus 2. And that's going to give me a 7, comma 7. So this looks like it went a vertical, underwent a vertical stretch and a translation two left and two down from the original. So uh, negative two, negative two, negative one comma one, two comma four, seven comma seven, and I get a nice definition here on my curve. That's the graph I'm looking for. On this one, they only want you to pick the graph. So the graph that looks like ours from the endpoint that we said it was going to be at, which was at negative 2, negative 2, is going to be, uh, it looks like D. You were looking at the red, the red uh, graph.
drag and drop the values into the boxes to complete the function that matches the graph using the indicated transformation. So here we're going backwards. They're giving us the graph, and they want us to write the, um, the, the uh, function that pertains to it. By the notation they've used, it looks like the, they want us to have a B here, which in this case we have to have a B because we can tell this underwent a y-axis reflection. And with a square root function, that's the only way that we can get it to look that way is with a B. So uh, A is going to be 1. Uh, B is actually what I'm going to end up looking for because H and K can be identified by looking at the graph. That's going to be, we know that that's the end point. So in this case, that end point looks like it's at 4, 1. So H will be 4 and K will be 1. I need B. So in order to find B, I need an extra point. And luckily, they've been nice enough to give it to us. It looks like it's going to be a decimal, but uh, that's fine. We can use that. That point is at 3.5 comma 2. So X is going to be 3.5 and Y is going to be 2. So let's write our function here where instead of Y, I'm going to write 2 equals. Then it will be square root of the B I'm looking for. X is 3.5 minus h, which is 4, and then outside, we'll put k, which is plus 1. 3.5 minus 4 is uh, going to be negative 0.5, so we have square root of negative 0.5 uh, b plus 1. Let's get that b by itself, minus 1 minus 1, cancels out. 1 equals square root of negative 0.5b. To get rid of a square root, we're going to square both sides, but we still get 1 is equal to negative 0.5b. Square root property does not apply here because I didn't cancel. Um, I didn't do the square root. I did a square. When you cancel out a square with a square root, then you use square root property, but not here. Now I'll get rid of this uh, negative 0.5 by dividing by negative 0.5 on both sides. And 1 divided by negative 0.5 is going to be negative 2. B is negative 2. So we'll go ahead and drag and drop. There's going to be a negative 2 in here. X minus... Um, H, which was 4, and then K was 1. And that's correct. Okay, same thing as we did on the last one, but at least now we're going to be looking for A. A is going to be the unknown. B will leave at 1 because you don't see a B in here. So they want us to find A. That's nice because it's always to your advantage to be able to solve for a variable outside of a square root as opposed for, to inside. My H and my K are going to be the end point. The end point here is at negative 4, negative 6. So H is going to be negative 4. And uh, K is going to be negative 6. I need an extra point, which they've been nice enough to give me, which that point has an X of negative 3 and a y of negative 4. So x is negative 3, y is negative 4. So let's write the function in this form right here, where g of x, which is the y, is going to be temporarily negative 4, is equal to the a that I'm looking for, square root of. On the inside, x is negative 3 minus h, which h is negative 4, so negative 3 plus 4, plus k, which is at the outside is minus 6. Negative 4 is equal to a times the square root of 1 minus 6. Square root of 1 is 1. 1a one is a. So negative 4 equals a minus 6 plus 6 plus 6. a is 2. So I have my a. I already had h and k. Just drag and drop where those go. Okay, so uh, my h was negative 4, but uh, notice how they already have a negative here. Um, so when I were to plug in a negative 4, it would show up as a positive 4. So yeah, I have to keep the negative 4 here because the negative negative would make it positive. And then on the outside, k is negative 6, but they put a plus out there. If they would have put the negative, I would put 6, but since they have a plus out there, I have to put the negative 6.